In this video, we'll walk you through creating your first feed using ArcGIS Velocity. As you may have seen in the Getting Started video, Velocity allows you to configure feeds and analytics to ingest, analyze, and take action based on observations from tracking data and IoT sensors and devices. A feed connects to a source of real-time data and brings it into ArcGIS for visualization and much more. You can create a feed either from the main page here or from the feed list page. The first step in creating a feed is selecting the type of feed or more generally the source of your real-time data. ArcGIS Velocity supports many kinds of feeds. You can monitor data that's already in ArcGIS from a stream layer or a feature layer. You can monitor observations coming in from IoT platforms like Azure or AWS IoT. And you can bring in data from common industry messaging systems like MQTT or Kafka. For this tutorial, we'll show you how to use the built-in simulator, which allows you to play a set of observations from a file. The next step in configuring a feed is to define the connection properties to the data source. For a simulator feed, this includes a couple different parameters, including the URL to the simulation file. If you're following along, this URL can be obtained from the feed quick lesson in the Velocity documentation. This file is a subset of maritime shipping observations available from marinecadaster.gov. It contains a set of observations for 30 different vessels ordered by time so that there's one observation for every ship in every set of 30 records. On the feed wizard, what we would do then is choose to simulate 30 features per execution. The simulation rate is controlled using the interval for sending events. We'll leave this at 1000 milliseconds. We'll be simulating the set of 30 ships every second. And we'll also leave the setting to repeat the simulation when the end of the file is reached. The time index field is the column in the delimited file that represents the timestamp of the data. The index numbering begins at zero. So in this data where the timestamp is the second field, we would enter a one here. Lastly, we'll also leave convert to current time checked. This essentially ignores timestamps of the original data and replaces it with the time of simulation. And it's usually best practice to leave this checked so that your maps can recognize data coming in as real time. So when you're ready, go ahead and click next. ArcGIS Velocity will then test the connection to the source of the data that you've configured, in this case, the simulation file. And if the connection is successful, it samples the data that's available. With these samples, the app then attempts to derive the schema of the data for you. From the Confirm Schema screen, you can make sure Velocity is interpreting the data correctly in terms of the format of the data, the parsing parameters, so in this case that the field delimiter is a comma, and that the data has a header row, which is allowing us to identify the field names. And you can also confirm that the field types are being derived as expected. And you can tailor the schema in certain ways on this screen. If you don't like derived field names, you can change them here. And you can also correct field types if they're incorrect. For example, numerical values are typically estimated to be an integer or a float. But if you know that the information represents coded values or ID values that might begin with a zero, you could set those fields to a string so that data is retained correctly. Now for this tutorial, you don't have to make any changes here, so click Next when you're ready. On this step, what you'll do is designate the key properties of the data, so the location, the date information, and the track ID. For location, you indicate whether the location information is in a single geometry field, a set of XY fields, or if there's no location at all. This shipping data has latitude and longitude information, so we'll choose XY fields, and the app automatically detects that there's fields with common names for these two characteristics. When the data is expressed in latitude and longitude values, its spatial reference is typically WGS 1984, so that's what we'll go ahead and put here. You can also search or view the full list of supported spatial references and projections if your data has XY values that are expressed differently. Next, you indicate whether or not your data has date-time information, and if so, whether those are expressed as epic values or string values. Epic values are numbers that measure time as the number of seconds or milliseconds since a given date, which in most computer systems is January 1st, 1970. Epic values are a common way to represent date-time information. If your date values are expressed as strings, as is the case with uh, this shipping data, You'll need to provide a date-time formatting string so that Velocity can parse the date string successfully. There are a few examples included in the app. 
and when you select the field that contains your start time, as you can see, a sample value from your data is displayed for you. From this, we can see that the data is most like this pattern here. And we'll add this dot s at the end to correctly parse the milliseconds out of our date values. Finally, you also designate whether there's a track ID for your data stream. A track ID is a unique identifier that associates all observations with the same entity. So for example, a vehicle ID, a temperature sensor ID, and so forth. Not all real-time data actually has a track ID, think lightning strikes, for example. But in this case, the track ID is the MMSI field, so we'll go ahead and select that. And with that, you're ready to complete your feed. Give your feed a useful name and optionally a summary. Now when you save your feed, the app will go to start the feed automatically. And the first time you ever start an ArcGIS Velocity item, you'll need to log into your ArcGIS Online account one more time. This authorizes Velocity to manage long-running tasks on your behalf, and this additional login should only occur once. After that, the Feed Details page will load, and you can see in the top right that the feed begins initializing. The Feed Details page allows you to view all the properties you've just configured. And towards the bottom, you can also see the schema with the field names and the field types. A feed may take up to 15 to 20 seconds to start up, and once it's running, you'll see features appearing in the embedded map. You can also open the feed in the ArcGIS Map Viewer. ArcGIS Velocity feeds behave like a stream layer when added to a web map. And that means incoming data is pushed to the map immediately. There's no need to set a refresh interval to get the latest information. Now, as you may recall, we're simulating these historical ship positions so that we get a new observation for each ship once every second. The live AIS data system typically only receives observations for a maritime vessel once every few minutes. So we're simulating these observations much faster than they would arrive in a live scenario. And you can choose to adjust the simulation rate as desired for your purposes using the simulation file. This concludes our tutorial on creating a feed and ingesting real-time data using ArcGIS Velocity. From here, you can use your feed to monitor real-time data in different web applications, or add it to a real-time analytic to store the data or perform incident detection. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.